On the surface, the Zen browser just seems like another fork of Firefox, perhaps another clone that you might have heard of on the interwebs and nothing more. But in fact, the Zen browser is just so much more than that. In fact, it trumps Firefox as well as LibreWolf, as well as every other Firefox fork out there in terms of sheer aesthetics. And I have to say, the prettiest browser of 2025 has to go to the Zen browser. As you can see, this is what you can make Zen look like with a bunch of different mods and plugins. So with the addition of these mods to Zen browser, you can make it look absolutely stunning and just gorgeous, drop dead gorgeous with a bunch of these mods that the team have put together along with the community that is behind Zen browser as well. That is what allows you to get this fantastic blur on Hyperland along with making the browser much more minimal in terms of getting a sidebar that looks like this, along with the ability to hide the toolbar, which or the title bar, whatever you want to call it, along with the sidebar whenever you have a page opened. Let's say I were to go to a site like YouTube, okay? So here I have YouTube open, and as you can see, the sidebar automatically hides, and hides itself. So in case I only wanted to view the URL bar, let's say I wanted to copy something from the bar, or I wanted to edit the URL itself, that would be pretty easy to do. And if I wanted to hide that as well to really create something that is just extraordinarily minimal, which is basically the entire browser, uh, the entire website just displayed inside of a window, right? You could do that as well with Zen. And that is one of the most fantastic and honestly unique selling points about this browser. Now, how exactly should you customize it in order to get it looking a little bit like this? Well, the answer just boils down to the mods that you use. So let's revert this back to just hiding the sidebar. As you can see, the URL bar just honestly it looks so good, especially when you configure it with the right mods so that you can get a quite symmetrical look over here with one icon here, one here, and one over here in the top right, as well as the top left. So this just looks fantastic. Now let me show you exactly how you're supposed to go about creating something like this for yourself. So first thing you want to do is, of course, you want to make sure that you strip all of the bloat that is there by default in Zen away. Now, in general, you just have to, okay. So tell you what, this, this is an exercise for you, okay? You have to learn how to do this sort of stuff yourself. I will walk you through each of the mods that I'm using, but apart from that, figuring out how to make Zen look extremely minimal, even without using a bunch of mods, should be something that's pretty simple to do. So instead of, let's say, okay, let, let me show you an example of what I mean. So in terms of, let's see here, search, okay? now. By default, what happens when you try and search something is you're going to have all of these search engines being displayed. And not just that, but then you also have your browsing history and so on and so forth. Well, as you can see, there is none of that over here. And instead, we have this really cool animation when I try to change anything inside of the URL bar. That is something that I will show you. But even if you did not have this mod installed previously, right, just not having the browser history and the download history being saved and whatnot just makes it so much easier and prettier to look at even without using mods. So just make sure you're able to get Zen looking very minimal even before you start to use any mods, okay? And once you do that, you are going to be ready in order to step into the wonderful world of customizing Zen with mods. Now, let's actually click on Zen mods and let me show you all of the different mods that I'm using. And guess what? You might've thought that I have probably something like 20 different mods over here, but in fact, I actually don't. The, all the mods that I have here are just six. And these mods are so easy and so simple and just fantastic to customize that they don't even take that much effort. All you have to do is just visit the store, okay, turn on the mod, just basically install the mod, which gets installed in a second or two. And once that's done, you just have it installed. You're basically, you can just forget, you can just afford to forget about the mod itself and just go about using the browser like normal. Now, first thing is of course, going to be hiding the back and forward buttons. So if you've noticed, okay, by default, you're not able to hide the back and forward buttons on the URL bar over here. So if I were to disable this mod temporarily, this is what you see. And in fact, this is the exact setup that I had right before I found this mod. So in order to make things look more symmetrical, instead of having to put both of these buttons in the same place, I put one over here, right to the left of the URL bar, and of course, one to the right of the URL bar. Chances are, if you're going to go back, you're most likely going to do that right to the left of the URL bar anyway, which is why I put that over here. Now, I could also do something like sh taking this and shifting it over here, okay? Probably giving it a completely different look that still looks good in its own right, but nothing beats the minimalism of just having two icons that basically 
don't need to be removed because they actually serve a purpose. Which is why I have this back forward always hidden mod being enabled here. Now, if you want to actually install this mod, you're supposed to go to the Zen Mods website. And here, you can just take a look at all of the different mods that they have. Now, by default, you're only going to be able to see 12 mods, but then they actually have 96 mods in total. So there's almost a hundred different mods for you to choose from. If you want to install the mods that I have already over here, such as this back forward one, you just have to look at it over here. So back FWD, yeah, back forward always hidden. So if you wanted to, you can just install this mod, click here, and then click on install mod. This says uninstall mod because I already have it. Otherwise, it's going to say install mod. Once you do that, you're going to be able to hide the back and forward buttons from your address bar, from your toolbar over here. So that is the first one. Next one is to hide the extension name. Right now, this isn't actually in much use, but this becomes extremely, extremely handy whenever you're using a extension like NightTab. So NightTab used to be a really popular extension back in the day in order for you to customize your start tab, your new tab page, basically. So if I look for night tab, it should still be over here. Okay. Now this one was actually extremely popular on Chromium web browsers, right? This was the go-to back in the day in around 2021. That was actually when I started rising. So it's been almost over four years now. But anyway, night tab still super minimal. As you can see, this is what it looks like. Looks pretty cool. Looks really good. In fact, now the only catch with using a different new tab page, whether it be just using a new tab page that's blank or using one that redirects you to a different site so on and so forth is that you're going to see a little extension thing over here so in order for you to skip that sort of stuff you can use this hide extension name little mod over here so if i were to show you what hide extension name looks like yeah as you can see here extension so on and c dot 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 eu new tab page so instead of having this absolutely hideous, horrendous thing being displayed inside of your URL bar, just cluttering stuff up and then making it look unprofessional. Instead of that, you can install this mod, which will basically get rid of this extension name on a new tab page, which means that you're not going to be seeing this, which makes your experience of the new tab much, much better. And it seems like the new tab page is actually a part of the browser itself, which just makes it so much more pleasant to look at instead of having to stare at this extension name every time you open your new tab page. So that is what I have for the new tab. Okay, so that is for hiding the extension name on new tab pages. After that, this one is more of a quality of life change. This is basically adding some top and bottom margin to the navbar, to this toolbar, title bar, navbar, whatever you want to call it, so that it doesn't look too tight. Now, this can actually be made to, okay, I can actually show you this better if I switch to a different theme. So if you've set up a custom theme switcher like this, one of the best parts is that you can easily change the theme to a different theme so that you can basically see all the different changes that you're making to your different apps without having to custom, like just manually type in SWWIMG and then change the wallpaper to something else. So instead of having to do that, you can just choose a different theme and then automatically have the browser or whatever is in the foreground be pushed to the foreground even further so that you can see it clearer. And by the way, if you want to learn how to make something like this yourself, not just copy and paste someone dot, someone's dot files, but then actually learn how to make custom themes, which is like this one, which don't just change your wallpaper, but then also change every single aspect of your system. Right? If you want to learn how to make something like this yourself, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out Hyper Accelerator. There, I teach you exactly what goes into making this sort of setup, right? All of the different tools that you're supposed to use, how you're supposed to configure every single tool, so on and so forth, basically everything that you could possibly need. So if you want to learn how to make something like this yourself, go ahead, click the first link and check out Hyper Accelerator. I would definitely love to help you out. Now, let's go back to the e-ink themes as you can see the difference with this navbar even clearer. So if I turn off this navbar margin, as you can see, it's very, very cramped. It just looks cramped. Cramped is the best way to describe the way that this browser looks right now. So if I even if I were to reload, okay, it just looks cramped. So let's go back to the mods and let's enable the navbar margin so that it doesn't look as cramped. So let's turn this on. And as you can see, finally, the URL bar gets some breathing room. And I've in fact added even more breathing room, or you can do it if you want to by changing the density to touch from normal. So if you want, that's another thing that you can do in order to add more space between the different elements inside of this bar vertically okay then after that we're down to our last three mods over here 
Now, no top sites. This one is also pretty simple. This is just hiding the top sites from the URL bar. So if I open the URL bar, you, you can't exactly see anything over here. If I were to turn this mod off, I can see a bunch of little weird shortcuts over here that I'm pretty much never going to use. So instead of having to display those and then be bothered by that, I can just turn this mod on, no top sites, and then make sure that I don't see any of that sort of stuff. Then smaller compact mod, this reduces the height of the compact sidebar. So this, this is the compact sidebar that this is talking about, that the extension the mod is talking about. If I were to turn this off, okay, this is what the compact mode looks like. Now notice that if you don't have this smaller compact mode mod enabled, okay, and you have the full size compact mode enabled, this navbar margin is going to basically conflict with that. So here you can notice a little bit of overlap between the navbar as well as the toolbar, the sidebar. So if you don't want that, you either have to make sure that you use smaller compact mode as well as navbar margin together if you want navbar margin. Otherwise, you can just turn this off and there you go. It looks fine. Here, you don't have any overlapping issues. That's it. So let's put this back to normal. You can also customize the height of the sidebar as well. So if you wanted something that was a little bit more vertical, vertically, what do you call it, taller, you could do that. If you wanted something shorter, you could do that as well. Now, the extension or the mod that you have been waiting for the most, which allows you to, to turn, okay, to turn Zen browser into this absolute masterpiece, freaking masterpiece of a web browser, masterpiece of a blurred window is Transparent Zen. So here we have Transparent Zen, which is going to make the Zen browsers tab background transparent, get smooth animations, all of these sweet, sweet animations that you see here, along with everything else. So if you hadn't already seen what switching between different tabs looks like. This is what that looks like. Now, if I were to highlight the URL bar, this is what highlighting the URL bar looks like. Now, my transparent Zen settings, this is what they look like. Now, as for transparent Zen, first of all, you have to allow transparency. Secondly, you have to make sure that you allow transparency on Linux. Now, because the Zen browser is cl cross platform, you can use it on Windows, you can use it on Mac OS. However, because we are on Hyperland, which is the goat of displaying blurred surfaces, Okay, dual Kawase blur, that's the blur, what do you call it? Blur system or blur mechanism that Hyperland is using. In order to make the most of that, you're going to have to check allow transparency on Linux. Now you can also choose to disable transparency when not in focus. However, that just defeats the purpose, right? So we'll just keep the transparency even if the window is not in focus. Then you can also have a transparent sidebar, which includes bookmarks, history, and sync. Now this only works if this sidebar is actually there you go. This is what I meant. So if you want the sidebar to also be transparent, you're just going to have to make sure that compact mode is disabled and that you can see both of the stuff here. Then you have transparent glance as well. Now glance is some feature which I haven't yet used. So you're not going to be able to see that here. But regardless, you can turn that on to be transparent as well, which means that you're also going to get blur on that on Hyperland. Then this is to enable a custom background color. So if I were to change the background color to this basically black with zero zero, which means 100 or zero percent opacity. This is basically fully transparent. Yeah, as you can see, this is a fully transparent surface, and this is what the fully transparent surface looks like. If I wanted to increase transparency, I could do that, just make it fully opaque. I could change FF to something like F0, and that would have a little bit of a difference. Okay, now zero F. Okay. I can also change it to 0A, something like AA. Yeah, you're just going to have to mess around with it in order to figure out how it's working. But the better thing to do was, is to just disable this custom background color, which means that the background color is going to be decided by the theme that you're using. So if I were to switch to a theme like Nord Darker, the background color automatically adapts. That's it. So this ensures that basically no matter what theme that you use, no matter what theme you're using inside of your custom theme switcher, the background color just says in such a way that each of the text elements inside of the browser itself are visible and readable. Then here you have a bunch more quality of life stuff like removing the shadow around the web page. If you wanted, you could do that. Otherwise you get the shadow. The shadow honestly looks pretty cool. So I'm going to keep that. Then you can enable a custom background image in full screen. Always show a custom background image. You can mess around with background images. Then you have an empty tab logo, which if you choose to enable, you're going to see the 
logo for the empty tab whether you can i with you whether you <laughs> god damn it either want it to be disabled enabled enabled in grayscale or inverted you can choose different options here you have the logo for the empty tab stuff and so on and so forth now i'm not actually using most of these features from here to about here the main thing that transparent zen does for me personally is to turn on transparency that's one thing and add in the animations so tab switch animation is one of them url bar zoom that's another one and trackpad swipe animations i haven't personally noticed what the trackpad swipe animations look like but as you can probably guess they look a little something like this and then the animation smoothness so you have diabolical you have springy this is what springy looks like looks very much like a spring then you have smooth flow this is what's there by default looks pretty good and then you also have quick snap so if you really want quick animations and you prefer quick animations you can set it to quick snap so choose your favorite and you should be done with transparent zen and that's it those are the only six mods that i currently use in order to make zen much much cleaner looking along with more minimal looking that's it zen doesn't look like this by default but we're just installing six mods instead of 200 23 even though that many mods don't exist you can make it look as pretty as this one over here now if you want to learn how to make a custom theme switcher like this one so that you don't have to go into every single app manually and then change themes like you're a caveman if you want to avoid doing that if you want to just follow a simple step-by-step -step process of learning how to make a theme switcher like this and not just copying somebody's dot files and hoping for the best and praying that those dot files never break if you don't want to do that if you instead want to come up with a design that's your own, come up with a setup that's your own and feel proud of using that setup, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out Hyper Accelerator. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay racing. Mwah.